there are uh, quite a few people online, so it's good to feel that we're part of a bigger community. Um, I want to introduce you to a few people that you may or may not know already. This is Miss Susanna, who's our... I'm Miss Sandra. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> Miss Sandra is our Head of uh, Innovation and Learning at, at SEC. And this is Miss Susanna, who you may or may not know is our Head of the Early Years. Mr Ivan is our that Head of School. Nice. <laughs> this is Mr Ivan, our Head of School. And Miss Julie, who's our Head of the Counselling Department. Um, so we're going, we are going to be the three presenters today to explain how the PYP works in brief and also how assessment works in the PYP. Uh, this is what we'll be, we'll be doing. Um, we'll look at an we'll overview of, of the, the programme. Program. And, and, <laughs> and then we'll go on to do the role of the teacher, the role of the student, the role of you guys, the families, and then look at a few resources that we've got to share with you. This is, the, you've probably seen this graphic before. It's an overview of the PYP and it explains in summary what we do. Okay, thanks. Unlike the MYP, the Middle Years Programme and the Diploma Programme, Higher Up the School, uh, which are both multidisciplinary and interdisciplinary, the PYP is actually transdisciplinary. And it means that in SAK, we work collaboratively together to develop um, a programme of inquiry that is organised and framed in six transdisciplinary units. I'm sure you might have seen uh, work or displays around the school um, that explains what, what those six units are, uh, who we are, where we are in time and space, uh, how we express ourselves, how the world works, how we organise ourselves and sharing the planet. And these transdisciplinary themes together provide children with authentic learning experiences that are not combined, confined to the boundaries of traditional subjects. So although the subjects play an important role in, learn, in the learning, PYP learners actually explore real world problems by going beyond subject boundaries. Students have an opportunity to reflect on the significance of their learning and to take meaningful action in their communities and the wider world. Our programme of inquiry outlines the scope and sequence of the learning experiences at PYP, in the PYP and our scope and sequence serves as our roadmap for teachers for providing us with guidance on what will be taught and when it will be taught. The POI, the programme of inquiry, is designed to foster inquiry based learning and develop conceptual understanding across various subject areas. The POI shows the units to be taught by each grade level, including which subjects will collaborate to, organ to explore each transdisciplinary theme. So one transdisciplinary theme may be very science focused, another may be very so social studies focused. Um, they may not be all taught within the same unit. Um, these transdisciplinary units have an overarching central idea. They're centred around two or three key concepts and then they'll have an explicit function, for example, responsibility or causation. And then there'll be an explicit, uh, sorry, then there'll be related concepts, for example, citizenship or self-regulation. And all the learning activities are based around lines of inquiry. And often within a unit, one unit of inquiry will have two, three, sometimes four uh, lines of inquiry which is other, other routes that we will take to explore the subject and the unit. The programme of inquiry is anchored in our scope and sequence, as I said, and that's the roadmap of standards that we focus on delivering in each grade. And the student is always, as you see in the middle, at the heart of all our planning and our learning programme. Ms. Thank you, Ms. Kim. Um, so why do we assess as a school? So we have um, assessment as a school helps us not only provide for the teachers um, the evidence that they need to advocate for their learners. So, for example, if they need some resources, if they need support, if they need training. So all of that, it comes through the evidence of, so of assessment. Um, it also helps us collect data that can use to recognize patterns and set our school uh, school wide goals every year. So when we do the improvement plans every year, we have to look at assessment data. Um, it's, as a school leaders, it helps us um, 
to understand whether our teaching and learning approaches are working or not. Um, are there are our students learning relevant skills uh, and they are learning conceptual understandings and also how can we support our, our teachers better and our learners better? So that's how why we assess as a school. Now, um, in traditional schools, there's um, I'll explain to you what the difference is between these assessments, but you will see that at the base they have this this type of assessment called assessment of learning in the bottom, then assessment for learning, and finally assessment as learning. So in our school is different. At the base, we have what is called assessment as learning, which is where the students are taking the responsibility for their learning. Um, they ask questions about their learning, their learning process, and they explore ways to improve. So they are setting goals, they are reflecting on their learning. So that's very important for us. And so it's at the base of our assessment. Then we have what we call the assessment. Um, sorry, one second assessment for learning. So here's like the teachers talking to the students, giving them feedback, their peer feedback. So it's a lot of, of, of the more social aspect of learning. It happens this assessment for learning. And finally, assessment of learning, that's your quizzes, your, your summative tasks, your formative tasks. It's like the more uh, common thing that you will see in the schools where, okay, they have a quiz, they have a spelling quiz. That's what will be at the top. So it is important because you you know part of learning has to be recalling information, but it is not our main focus in assessment. Um, then we have next. So in our school, we assess not only knowledge, so things that you recall, um, facts, uh, but we also talk about concepts. So for example, how do the, the everything that we learn, how does it fit together? So in our schools, we we are testing or assessing for knowledge, for concepts, but also for skills. So there's always a misconception, oh, you know, in Ivy schools, they don't test for skills. No, no, we do. So there will be your, your, your spelling. There will be uh, sometimes your multiplication. So there are things that they are important, uh, but they don't take the, the, the whole bulk of our assessment. So it's balance. You assess for knowledge, for conceptual understanding and for skills. Um, as a teacher, so where would assessment fall? So most of the time when teachers are assessing, you will see that they spend a lot of time in monitoring the learning. So what they're asking themselves at that point is, are they are the students getting what we're teaching? Because that, that way they, they go back, okay, I need to modify a little bit the lesson. I need to bring more resources. This is not working. So they're asking that question, are they getting what we're learning? Then the part of the second uh, part here, where they spend most of the time in assessing, is documenting the learning. So this is collecting that evidence. Those 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 assessments, for example, that we have there, they collected, they give feedback, they check for the impact of their teaching, uh, the impact of the teaching on the students. And in here, the documenting the learning. So you start in grade three, in grade two. The, the kids are starting to collect their own evidence. So a lot of the collecting evidence, making things for their portfolio, their reflections, it will fall, fall into documenting the learning. And um, then we have the next one is like, have they met the learning outcomes? So that's measuring the learning. So that's they go back, they check the, the student work, they see what's, how, how have they met the learning outcomes or not, and they have to go back, give the students feedback. And the final part of their time assessing is reporting. So this is where they prepare the report cards, they do the narratives that you will get in that report card. And I'll explain to you a little bit what you should expect in your report cards. Um, so in, when they're monitoring for learning, so what are they doing? They're doing observations, they're doing discussions, they're doing checking in with individual students, they're giving feedback, they're using conferring. So it's like one-to-one -one meetings with their students. They're using rubrics, they're using checklists. So that's what we use for monitoring learning. For documented learning, so you have your daily work, your portfolios, the data from, from the summatives and formatives, that's in documented learning, uh, measuring learning. So we also have not only internal assessments, but we also have some external assessments. So for, for the uh, PYP in grades uh, three and up, 
they do this uh, external assessment called ESA test that is 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 benchmarked to the PISA uh, international assessment. So we use it to measure our our growth every year. So we started using it last year, and then we use it again this year to measure the growth from one year to another. Also, it's a benchmark against other countries, other IB schools. So it helps us give us an idea of how we're doing. Um, Cat four. This is more in in uh, middle school. But it's also help us uh, guide us to, for example, uh, the potential of the students. It gives us an idea how we can help them better. It gives us an idea on like, OK, what what subjects maybe they will take in, in uh, when they do the diploma program. So all of that information is, is there and it also helps us do our like uh, added value because we take that every three years and then we see how the this, how our program has helped them meet their potential. Um, of course, in here, measuring energy, you have your quizzes, your summary tasks. So the summary task is that project in the unit, but they, they, they work on it little by little. So it's not just, OK, do they ace the test? No, it's, it's a project that they're building little by little. Um, and they're, they're spending time also in reporting. So this is the report cards, the student reflection, the student led conferences uh, in when you were you invited and the students not only set their goals, but also are sharing their progress. So when they are doing their student led conferences, you will see how much they have learned. And so that's part of reporting on their learning. This is some examples of their uh, some of the formatives that they've done in some classes. These are from grade two. Yes. And then you have a, an example for the earlier years when they're using checklists to see how they, they self-assess. Okay, and here, so when you receive your report card, you know, learning is a journey. So when we report, we report on that journey. So it's that point in time. So we don't want you to, when you receive this report card, you said, oh my God, let's say your child was emerging. What does that mean? It just simply means they need a lot of support in that time, in that point in time. It doesn't mean that next unit, they, they could not do better. For, for example, if, if some of them struggle a lot in, in uh, fractions, so that might be this time emerging, they need a lot of support, but next time they could be in developing where they need some support, but not a lot of support. Then you have proficient, the kid, the child now is able to do things on their own. They don't need the teacher to, to do some of the support. And then finally, STEM. Now, don't expect all of them to be STEM. We will give them the opportunities to be standing, but it's like, think of like an A+, plus, right? Not everybody gets an A+, plus. sometimes you can. We have the potential, we give you the tools, but it is rare that this is when the student learn something in school, then they go home and do an action. Or they said, OK, look, I'm connecting what I learned. Uh, for example, the, 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 what they were learning about patterns in early years. And there was a student that came and they said, oh, I saw patterns in math. I saw patterns when I was walking in the in the in the in the in, the, in you know, in the outside. I saw patterns everywhere. So when they are able to connect that thing and then they come back and tell you, look, I saw patterns everywhere, you know, they're standing. They're bringing not only the knowledge that they got here, but they're also connecting it to the wider world. So that's when. It, so what do we do as parents? We can help them extend by 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 encouraging them to take action, to having conversations with them of what did you do in school, like you know more deeper conversation. Tell me a little bit about the concepts you're learning. So we help them extend, uh, and and of course in in school we give them tools to be able to extend. But don't think that if if your child is not meeting stand, that means that they're not doing well. No, they, they'll get there when they get there. Um, so where would you expect the report cards? So in my, in my SEC, there is an area that says uh, when you connect to my SEC application under your child profile, uh, you will see something that says learning environment. When you click on the learning environment, it'll connect you to manage back. So do not go into a separate, um, do not download the Manage Back application because it's already connected to my second. It's connected to your credentials. So you just have to log in through the Microsoft credentials and it'll get you right in. And you only have to do it once. Once you log in, you'll connect it. Okay. And so in Manage Back, that's where you see reports. It will say reports. You'll see the attendance. All of that information is there. Okay. Um, so I pass it over to Ms. Kelly. So that was how assessment looks 
for a teacher, and that's what teachers do um, day in and day out. But how does it feel for a student to be assessed in the PYP? What the PYP has done quite brilliantly, I think, is move away from the traditional high stakes exams and tests that we probably all experienced when we were at school. And it's moved towards a more consistent approach. Um, in education, we're repeatedly asking, uh, how do we prepare our children for an, un an unknown future? The world is changing so fast. What do they really need to know? What do they need to be able to do? But we can't know what those challenges and what those opportunities are. Therefore, our primary goal in the PYP as educators is to equip our students with the skills and capacities that they're going to need to learn on their own. Um, being assessment capable, we call it. Once they're assessment capable, they're continuously reflecting on their own learning. They're setting goals for themselves. They're planning their own next steps to achieve those goals. They're self-assessing by asking themselves questions. Where am I going? Where, I, where am I now? How do I close the gap? It's, it is said often, when students know how to learn, they're able to become their own teachers. Assessment capable students are simply students who have agency. They take ownership of their own learning and they reflect on their progress. Reflection is at the heart of a student becoming intrinsically motivated as a learner. That's one who's self-aware, self-driven and energised to act, to have agency. Developing assessment capabilities requires students and teachers to work in partnership to develop those goals and to reflect on that learning and self-adjusting. Students can't do that on their own. They need to work with us to learn those skills. And becoming assessment capable is a lifelong skill that leads to limitless learning. When children become assessment capable, they're continuously monitoring their own progress. They know where they are. They reflect on their learning. They can set their own goals and they can plan their next steps. This formative style of assessment approach is designed to promote student agency and collaboration in the classroom and to develop students' evaluative judgment. Because only by knowing what is good can students know what they need to do to be good. That is not to say that there's not a place at times for the traditional ways that we were taught. Old fashioned memorising, rote learning, testing, spellings, for example or multiplication tables. We can all manage these now without, with our autocorrects and calculators on our phones, but there is something wondrous to a child when they feel that sense of accomplishment that they've done well and knowing what is good and having the intrinsic motivation to want to achieve good is assessment capable. I wanted to share with you this slide. It actually focuses on the action that we focus on at the end of units. So you'll, you'll see um, as part of the cycle of inquiry, there is a, a, an area for action at the end. And this is what we're working towards. Some of the ways that students will, will show us action will be in school through the, the regular presentations that they do to their classmates, to other classes, to the, to the teachers and to us as management. Some of them will be group and individual projects that they've worked on together to affect action in school. One big one is the grade five final exhibition in the last year of PYP. This is a, a big presentation where they focus on an action that they will take. However, most of the actions that come out of the units that they learn at school happen away from school. They happen a long time after the unit. Uh, a student came to me earlier this year in September actually, and told me about something that they'd done over the summer holidays that I talked to them, they'd learned a year ago, in September. So often the actions will have a delayed response, but they will find something that they connect outside of school and then they'll do something about it. So we would really welcome if you can share with us those moments at home when they do an action and, you, and they tell you this is because we were learning about whatever in the classroom. And it's a wonderful moment for our educators to hear those actions that they take at home with you that we may never see. So we've covered the role of the student, we covered the role of the teacher, but what about the families? We have an essential role. We are a learning community and our part and our role is key to refer our students to become more engaged, more curious, continue what they do at school 
extended at home. We're going to have different areas where we can help our students in our communication, in our interactions. When we come, when we become actively involved in what is their day to day, we are helping them to continue to have that interest. We'll help them become learners for life. They'll have this foundation that is only happening at home. Yes, we do work at school, but the part that you play in this learning process, in this learning journey, is really, really important. It's important for you as well and for us that you understand the learning and the development. Not all the children learn the same way. Not all the children have the same developmental process. They may be at different stages. They may not be reading ready to acquire one of these skills, but they will. And the teachers will have these interviews with you and they'll tell you at which exact point they are in this development and how can we support them at home. So this part of the process is very, very interesting as well. Paying attention to the school's feedback. Everything that we tell you is to help you understand what we're doing and where your children are. Then obviously we want you to boost their skills, these thinking skills, these creative skills, these uh, research skills. So all these things that we can do at home, if we're starting a new unit of inquiry, we'll send you a newsletter and we'll tell you we're learning where we come from. We're learning about our background. We're learning about our family's background. And then having those conversations, showing them the photo albums, putting them in touch with their grandparents and asking some questions that they, they will come and retell with their partners at school, with their teachers and feel really proud of them and really understand better what they've been taught at school. And obviously the magic of wonder. The students in the PYP, they're inquirers, they ask questions. Sometimes they ask difficult questions, but the important thing is how do we handle this question? If a kid is asking, it's because there's an interest behind. There's something that they're eager to know. So let's help them. Let's open that book. Let's check that internet. Let's find something that will connect them to that question and find an answer for them. And then with that answer, they'll come back to school again and they'll share it. And if we give them an object, they'll share it with their, with their peers in the class. So these are very, very relevant occasions that we have to interact with our children and they will continue extending, like Miss Sander was saying, that learning will stay with them. It will be significant because everything else we can find somewhere. We can click a button and it will give you an answer. But when there's a question that is really burning you, that answer will stay, we will not forget. So in a PYP family, what do we do? We use the learner profile. The students will go home and they'll ask, or they'll answer, or they'll use different terminology. They'll say, oh, today was an excellent communicator. So for us, it's important to understand that that means that today they were participating in the discussions, that they were asking good questions, that they were doing very good reflections. Or they'll say, today I was a risk taker. It doesn't mean that all of a sudden they started running into a, and jumping over things. It means that they maybe tried something that before they couldn't do and they feel good and it's been acknowledged at school. So share that with them and share that moment of appreciation. Also, the unit of inquiry will tell you the central idea. Uh, people transform materials for different purposes. That means that at school we have some uh, lines of inquiry that are material properties, recycling. So let's continue that inquiry at home. Let's understand what they're learning about and let's help them. Let's find materials, let's find answers, let's give them the tools and the, and the things that they need to be able to create something new. Let's th let them take it home. We'll be doing plenty at, at school, but at home you can help a lot. Also, if we're learning about how we share the planet, let's go on a trip, let's go into the nature, let's do a nature walk, let's go a scavenger hunt, let's see what we can find what treasures we can collect during our trip. Let's find what they are, let's document it, let's take it to school, let's share with our friends. So that is taking the learning a little bit further. Also volunteer, volunteer, help organize. Sometimes we ask you for help, please come with us to, to join us on a field trip. Volunteer for activities, we'll ask you to come and read uh, some books in your um, original language. We'll ask you to maybe participate presenting on the Women's Science Day. If you have one of these jobs that are really, really interesting, I cannot tell you how 
relevant it will be from our children to hear it straight from you because we'll be doing these things but when you're telling them it really is significant for them it really is exciting and if it's your mom then you're the protagonist of the day and also look for examples and opportunities for them to take action. Ms. Kim was telling you how important is this action. So even you as a parent, when they see you doing things, they will want to do them themselves. And sometimes they'll be the ambassadors. They'll be saying, oh, we have to recycle. Listen to them. Let's see. OK, how are we going to do it? Let's organize it at home. So yes, let them see you. We are the models. We are always modeling what they do. Now, we will send you, like we said, before we start the unit of inquiry, we'll send you a newsletter. In this newsletter, you'll have information. We try to make it attractive and different because you know we know that you get a lot of information along the day. But this is really important. Print it, post it, so we know what's happening, so we know what's going on at school. Uh, you'll see the learning outcomes, so you'll see what the things that they're going to be learning as well. Like Ms. Sandra said, not only the skills, not only the big ideas, but also which knowledge they're going to be acquiring during the unit. So find objects related to this unit, share them with the school, take them for show and tell. The teacher will might not be doing it that day, but they'll find a moment with this can be shared with everybody else in the classroom. Also, please continue reading our messages in the grades one and above. You, you get a weekly message where they tell you things that are happening in that school. If you have younger children, we try to do it on a daily basis because sometimes, obviously, they don't share as much. Sometimes we ask them questions. What did you do? What did you eat? What did you play with? What did you learn today? But for us, it's like really clear for them. There's a world of experiences from 7 to 3.30. You don't know how many things they've done. So all of a sudden it's like, hmm. But if you see, oh, it says that you've done a wonderful experiment. You've been changing the colors of the flowers. Oh, how did you do that? Then I'm connecting to something very specific and then I'll be able to tell you and maybe explain the whole process and you'll get much more and richer information of what the day-to-day the -day school is. And also we try to keep you informed through the photos, through the albums, through the galleries. We know that sometimes it takes to, uh, it takes time for you to receive them, but we try to post as many as we can because we know that is another way that you can see what happens at school. Now, the report card, as Ms. Sandra was saying, at the end of the unit, at the end of the term, the teachers sit down and put with all this evidence that they've collected all through the unit, because this is not a point in time, this is not a final test, this is not today is the day when you have to demonstrate what you know. We demonstrate continuously, we demonstrate every day by every action that we do, by every activity that we do, by the responses to different uh, uh, maybe questionnaires or uh, everything that we do requires an assessment, requires a feedback. They'll show the teacher what they're doing and the teacher will say, wow, today you've done a great job, but maybe look at this part. This you could read again, you could write again and maybe use more concepts from the unit of inquiry, show that you have a better understanding and they'll improve because the feedback is continuous. So at the end, yes, we'll take all this evidence and we'll do a narrative and we'll explain during this unit, what have we done during this unit? What learner profile have we been focusing on? We've been trying to be thinkers, have been, we've been trying to be caring if we're sharing the planet, have more responsibility over how we respect the environment and other animals, for example. So they'll explain all this. And yes, we'll concentrate on the specific subjects, those learnings that are related to the science world or those that are related to social studies. So you'll have this information. What you will not have is numbers. Ms. Sandra explained how we evaluate, how we assess our children, because our children, they're all at 10, they're at 20, but that they do learn in a different way. So if they're emerging, it means that they're starting and tomorrow they might do it better. And with your help and the support and the information that the teachers put in the report card saying target, we need to give them a little bit more help in this area. They'll be able to do it even better. So please read this, but don't only keep it for yourself because we write it for them too. So it's important to have this discussion. This is what we were saying. The role that you play is really important. We need to share this information because they need to know their strengths and the weaknesses and where do they need to focus so they can improve. Our aim is that they go as far as they can get. Not at the same time, but when is their moment? And how do we support this?
So yes, it is a celebration. It's a continuous celebration of their progress because it's a journey and it's continuous. So reporting is just the way to celebrate what they've done, what they've accomplished so far. But this continues and they're always the protagonist of this learning. So the more we support them, the more that we make them and we help them be the, le the leaders of this learning, the further they will go. And this is how we celebrate. I just wanted to add, um, when we send the report, we will send you a message that a report is in Manage Back. And we also will send you a reflection form that, OK, you don't have to do it, but it's really helpful when you when you read the report with your student, with your child uh, to reflect so that you fill it together, the reflection form, because it's like a roadmap. It's a, it's, it helps them plan the next steps, because in every report, there's the target. And so they said, OK, how are we going to do this target? What should we do at home to meet this target? So it gives them a, like a, an actual action plan, which we want to teach them that in order to learn, you have to have an action plan to be able to to meet your targets. So if you do that exercise, that would be great because it'll help them um, to continue to grow. Contact any one of us um, if you have any questions there. There's a table of grade three assessments just behind you. But I invite you to take a look at it. They're color coded, so the orange ones are performances. And then the green ones are the end of the site. A little bit more like a high space, where the other is very it, it's obviously the build development and plan on it, but they're a little bit more. Do this. 